Hello and welcome to Canada Conversations. My name is Andrew O'Connor and I'm joined today by Lydia Tadone. She is the Republican and Independent Party endorsed candidate for the 16th General Assembly District for the Connecticut State House. Um, Lydia, thank you for joining me. Good morning. Thank you. How are you? Thank you. Fine, thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so start out just, you know, casual conversation. Tell the voters a little bit about yourself, your personal well, background. Well, first, I'd like to thank you, Andrew, and SCT SCTV for uh, allowing me to have the opportunity to speak with you and also to uh, speak to the voters and residents of Connecticut. So a little bit about me. I was born in Hartford. Uh, I am the daughter of Italian immigrants that came to Hartford, settled in Hartford, and then we moved to Bloomfield. So I grew up in Bloomfield. Uh, I am a graduate of Bloomfield High School. I have mm -hmm. one sister, Christine, who presently resides in Charlotte, North Carolina with her family. And uh, about, a little bit about my family, my parents, my dad was a uh, HVAC mechanic and mm -hmm. my mom was a school secretary for the Bloomfield Public Schools. So that was a little bit of the entree into uh, into public yeah. education for me. Were your me. parents from Connecticut originally? No, um, they're from Italy. Oh, yes, so they, immigrants, they, very nice. Yes, they are. They immigrated from Italy and my mom was a, a second generation and my dad was a first generation. Very but, cool. Uh, very but cool. we do have uh, very strong family ties in, in Italy also. Mm -hmm. So. With that, uh, I was the uh, first to go to college in my family. I uh, graduated from Bentley College, which is now Bentley University in, in, uh, in, in Waltham, Massachusetts. And uh, I uh, started out working uh, as a financial analyst for several years at St. Francis Hospital. Then I uh, also continued my career uh, as a uh, early childhood uh, educational coordinator for the Greater Hartford YMCA and mm -hmm. then worked several years at the Farmington Valley YMCA located here in, uh, in, in uh, Cranby. So I actually enjoyed working for many, many years with the youngest and the most vulnerable of our population, children from the ages of two to four years old. Very nice. So a little bit about my personal life. I am married to Peter Tadone and uh, we relocated and moved to uh, Simsbury in 1987 when our mm -hmm. son Matthew was a year old and we chose Simsbury at that time for its educational system mm -hmm. and also for the community that we had heard so much about. So we uh, raised our children here, our son Matthew and our daughter Nina was born here and uh, they attended Latimer Lane, Henry James Middle School and are both graduates of Simsbury High School. Mm -hmm. And then they continued on and, and both graduated from, uh, from uh, college. But during the time that we were raising and rearing our family here, our children and family, like many in town, had uh, been very involved in many of the activities and sports and, and community uh, organizations that uh, many families are, are participating in of also of today. And uh, my husband, Peter, has been a 30-year member as a EMT of the Simsbury Volunteer Ambulance. And uh, I actually started my public service as PTO president at Latimer Lane School when my children were in, uh, in their elementary years. Can't quite remember the dates, but, but it's when they, were, uh, when they were students there at, uh, at, at, uh, at Latimer Lane. Wonderful. So you started to touch on it right there at the end. Um, you started your public service on the PTO at Latimer. Yes, I did. Um, what else have you done uh, in the public service? Well, th with that was just the beginning of a long tenure of nearly 20 years as a Board of Education member here for Simsbury Board of Education. Mm -hmm. And uh, I uh, recently uh, completed a four-year term as chairman. Mm -hmm. And during my nearly two decades of, of service in, in public education, I uh, also had the opportunity to uh, serve as chair of Capital Region Education Council mm -hmm. and also as president of Connecticut Association of Boards of Ed. And uh, I am also presently a board of director on National School Board Association. But circling back to my uh, board service, probably my most uh, proudest 
time and, and tenure and years of service is with the Board of Education. I'm extremely proud of the school system, our teachers, parents, and students, and uh, we have worked so hard to rate, retain a high quality nationally acclaimed school system. And as you know, every year our school system is ranked as one of the best in the Connecticut and also within the state. And the reason why is we have been able to keep our costs down and pass craft and pass very successful budgets mm -hmm. in, uh, in in collaboration with the Board of Finance and the Board of uh, Board of Selectmen, and uh, therefore able to sustain the um, school system year after year. And uh, even with our per people expenditure as one of the lowest in state of Connecticut, we still manage and are able to continue the quality school system that those that are here in Simsbury and moved to Simsbury or continued are continued living here are used to used to having. Mm -hmm. So that is really important to me uh, is to keep our school system in, in the nature and the rating that it has been. So obviously you have a passion for public service. You've done it for nearly 20 years. Yes, I do. Um, and why now? Why did you decide to run for state representative? Um, you've obviously had a very successful tenure. You've done very well on the Board of Education and you have a um, successful professional career. Why now? Why state representative? Uh, timing is everything, Andrew, and the time is right for me to make this move. And uh, to answer your question, the reason why I'm running, there are really two big motivating factors mm -hmm. that um, are motivating me to run for for state representative. And the first and foremost is the economy and the state budget, which has extracted such a heavy price from our taxpayers, not only in Simsbury, but in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Connecticut has ended up at the bottom rankings for years now when we used to be at the top of the rankings. And uh, if you'll indulge me, I have a few little statistics. We now rank last in fiscal solvency. We now rank 41st for job seekers. And we now rank as the worst state for small business in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, it's not enough for me to sit quietly and vote against bad legislation. But as state representative, and hopefully I'll have the opportunity to represent Simsbury, but it will be for, for me and up to me to bring that fight to the state house. And, and that's what I pledge to do, to fight for the citizens of Simsbury, for the residents of Simsbury, and also fight to help get Connecticut's economy back on track where it once was at mm -hmm. one time. So I also have made a pledge. I will not vote for any tax increases and I will not vote for any out of whack expenditures, but I will fight for fiscal discipline and responsibility. Wonderful. The second motivating factor is we need to protect the educational cost sharing reimbursement for the town of Simsbury. As you recently know, there was a recent Supreme Court ruling, and that has left the Connecticut education in a crisis state. The education system in Simsbury is one of my deepest passions, and I can't sit by and watch the legislature dismantle what I and many others have worked so hard for Simsbury in state of Connecticut to protect our Simsbury students. So that is an area that I vow and I pledge to protect the educational sh cost sharing reimbursement and mm -hmm. grant and to also help develop a fair system of reimbursement, equitable reimbursement for the cities and towns in Connecticut. Wonderful. Uh, if we can backtrack a little bit slightly. You uh, mentioned some statistics, uh, fiscal solvency, job seekers, and small businesses. Um, me personally, I graduated from the University of Connecticut two years ago. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate I was able to find a job pretty much right out of college. Many of my friends 
either had to leave Connecticut to find a job or are to this day still unemployed. Um, it's not just the people that are having trouble with jobs. Business, small businesses are having trouble with jobs. Um, they need to leave because they can't afford to do business here. Um, I would say the thing that's most important to me as a young person is being able to stay in Connecticut. I really enjoyed Connecticut. I love being here. Um, I was fortunate enough to graduate from Simsbury High School and then I stayed here for college. What will you do as the state representative for Simsbury to make Connecticut a better place to live, a better place to work for both people and businesses? Um, that is a very good question. And uh, Andrew, I'll segue that into my door-to-door -door campaigning. I have been door-to-door -door campaigning since June, mm -hmm. and I have spoken and reached hundreds and hundreds of neighbors and residents in Simsbury. And their first and foremost concern is, will they be able to remain living here in Simsbury or living in Connecticut? And when we talk about the young millennials that can't afford to live here, we can also extend that to many that are my age and also seniors and the elderly that are concerned about living here. Mm -hmm. I can speak personally about the millennials and about young people leaving Connecticut. Both our children, Matthew and Nina, live in different parts of the country and they have moved due to job opportunities. And they've also moved to where they can afford to live and a quality of life. But in terms of our young people here in Connecticut that we are losing every day, it's because of the affordability of being able to live in Connecticut mm -hmm. and also that they are able to have greater job opportunities in other parts of the country, which we do not presently have for many of our young people here in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. In terms of our baby boomers that are looking to retire and those that have retired, and also seniors that are still presently living here, mm -hmm. they're very concerned about the next step, the next few years. How are they going to be able to retire, continue living here due to the high taxes within the state of Connecticut? And that is a concern, not only for them, but also for me. Mm -hmm. In terms of small businesses, I've spoken to many small business owners here in Simsbury, several that have, uh, have closed, have had to leave, and also many small businesses in Connecticut. And the underlying issue, not only taxes for them, are the state regulations for mm -hmm. small business owners, whether setting up a business, starting a business, retaining a business. Mm -hmm. So that is an area that I hope to be able to work with other legislators at, at, uh, at the Capitol and the LOB is, is to reduce the regulations and red tape for our business owners. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bottom line is we want to re retain our small business owners here in Connecticut, and we want to attract new business here in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And how do we do that? And how do we continue to sustain what we already have and also for the future of Connecticut? Wonderful. Then on the flip side of that, um, as soon as my father retires, I know my parents are packing up and leaving Connecticut. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you did, you mentioned. I believe that there was a statistic that we are one of five states to tax social security. So right off the bat there, there's 45 better options mm -hmm. than Connecticut. Mm -hmm. um, they are going to go down south to greener pastures and cheaper living. Um, what will you do to keep people in Connecticut? Because it's not enough to, you know, encourage um, people to come here to uh, to learn and to right. live and to work. We want them to live out their remaining days. Obviously, if they lived here for to raise their kids in the school system. Their grandchildren are probably going to the school system, so they want to be close to their children. But if they can't afford to live here, they can't afford to be close to their children. What will you do to keep people in the state throughout their entire lives? That is the key question. They, they would love to continue to live here, but the elephant in the, in the room is can they afford it? Mm -hmm. It's the tax structure. It's the increasing burden of the taxes that are on each of our shoulders. And I'm talking in terms of, of property taxes. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have a beautiful state. And as I've driven around the state through my entire life and more recently during my campaign, we do not um, 
uh, tout herself enough on the wonderful lifestyle that we have here in Connecticut and mm -hmm. what what the state of Connecticut has to offer in terms of resources, whether that be natural resources or or resources within our cities or our small towns. Yeah. But with that being said, there is a cost to that also. So it is a an expensive state to live in. We mm -hmm. all know that. And there are probably 49 other states or 45 other states that are less expensive to live in. Yeah. But we do have in Connecticut something that other states do not have. And that is something that we need to also integrate in the affordability for those that wish to remain here in the state mm -hmm. of Connecticut. So these are great pressures that uh, exist today. They've existed for several years. And uh, when we talk about the one party rule over 25 years mm -hmm. within the state legislature, this compounds to where we are today and nothing will change overnight nothing will change within a year but you've, we've got to start somewhere and i hope that i can bring the experience of what i've been able to do over my 20 plus years in public service here in simsbury at the state level wonderful and then one more question um I know the reason my parents moved to Simsbury when we were looking to move um, was the school system. Simsbury is one of the mm -hmm. best school systems in the state, has one of the best school systems in the country, it's very well respected. Um, in hindsight, I am so grateful to have moved to Simsbury, it prepared me for college and it's prepared me for my career. Um, unfortunately, it looks like Connecticut's education funding is going to be shaken up in the coming months and even the coming year going down the road with the recent Supreme Court ruling that mm -hmm. you mentioned earlier. Um, so now that you've mentioned that and you obviously have the experience in education and the uh, passion for it, what are your thoughts on what you see coming and what will you do to keep Simsbury's public schools at the level they currently are? With my experience all these years, and as I mentioned before, how passionate I am about education and about providing the most adequate and fair and equitable education to our students, that comes with a price. But with that being said, I will fight to preserve and maintain our school system and with that we have to also look at the future and the realities of the budgets to come from here on in. Yeah. The recent ruling um, that uh, that was handed down to us has certainly shaken and stir stirred um, many district leaders in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And that not only affects Simsbury, affects urbans and small districts within Connecticut. But um, as I had mentioned before, I will do what I need to do to preserve our education system here in Connecticut. And when I get to the Capitol and uh, when I am part of the legislature, my job is to look at the funding, the educational cost grant funding reimbursement back to Connecticut, back to Simsbury. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I have testified before the Education Committee about over the past several years and will continue to work to to make sure and ensure that our students are receiving the best education they possibly can get. That's great. Well, that's all I have for you. Um, I appreciate you joining me and discussing uh, your campaign and the issues that are important to you and why you're running and all the sorts. Um, I believe you have a few words that you'd like to say to Simsbury voters. But again, thank you and good luck um, as we approach Election Day. Well, I do, Andrew, and, and thank you for the opportunity of having me here today. And my pledge is that I will bring the fight to the State House. I will stand up and fight hard to deal with the new economic reality we're in. I hope you'll vote for me so I can fight for you. Please feel free to contact me at tadone2016 at gmail.com or find me on Facebook. Lydia Tidone for State Representative. Thank you, and I urge you to vote on Tuesday, November 8th.
Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.